Uh, as we said, there are many canvases. I think that they are uh, all useful as long as we uh, identify the ultimate purpose of each of them related to specific faces. I think they can be really useful because the logics behind canvases in general uh, it's, is standard. So I think it would be helpful on the contrary for the trainees to follow the same process throughout similar but different canvases. Now I'm going to present uh, our Creative Project Canvas. Uh, the Creative Project Canvas, uh, in my opinion, as you can see here, is just right as it was added actually into the IO4 for the ideation step. Um, it, because it is an entrepreneurial tool to visualize and reflect upon one's own social entrepreneurial project. So it's a key reflective strategic, strategic management and entrepreneurial tool to make uh, an idea become a living project. Why is it useful? Because it provides a simpler business idea project overview with an enterprising approach and uh, scoping, managing and monitoring um, purposes as well. It can be used as an individual tool or as a group tool uh, to assist all members in exploring, planning and managing different aspects of the shared social entrepreneurial idea project. But of course, it can be used as an individual tool as well. Now, uh, the Creative Project Canvas was implemented uh, by Matira Ha. Uh, since 2014 uh, through another Erasmus Plus project named Breaking the Desk, there was an entrepreneurial education project for artists and creatives. And as you can see, it's a sort of uh, evolution in different terms, I mean, of the standard business model canvas. It maintains more or less the same approach, the same division, different blocks, but the uh, approach of the Creative Project Canvas differs from the business model canvas as it is closer to the um, um, mindset, let's say, of entrepreneurs working within uh, CCIs, uh, social uh, entrepreneurial contexts, and so on. Now, uh, for the Creative Project Canvas, we actually tried, I mean, at the beginning, we thought as long as you start from the value block, then you can uh, you know, fill in uh, all the remaining blocks as you wish. But we always suggest a clear way to follow it. So the first part to start from is the value, which is about the value of the entrepreneurial idea. Then you have the second part of the Creative Project Canvas consisting of three blocks, which provide you an overview of the practical part of your project. That means what you can do to realize your project actually. So you reflect on the networks, you reflect on the activities and work you need to carry out, and you reflect on the equipment, material, and time needed to carry out your project. Then you move to the right part of the canvas, which includes three blocks, and make you reflect upon the external perception of the project. That means how you, as an entrepreneur, interact with your users, clients, and stakeholders. So you have champions, you will see, I will explain to you what that means, access for others, and getting feedback. And then the bottom part, consisting of two blocks, short-term gains and losses, and long-term rewards, are related to the sustainability of your project. That is the entrepreneurial strategy. As you can see, there is no specific, um, uh, how can I say, study about the financial um, part of a project, just because this is a reflection tool. To uh, start visualizing your project idea, you know, its key parts, and then to review it as you move forward in realizing your project. This is the Creative Project Canvas as it looks like uh, if we include the questions, because there are some key questions guiding the user in building the Creative Project Canvas. And these questions uh, basically help the user reflect upon each single aspect 
um, they need to consider in order to make their project feasible and applicable in their context. I'm not going through each questions, but in the activity I prepared, I will read them out to you. Okay, so just to explain to you all the blocks, as you can see, the value is needed to explore the value of your, of course, your is for the user project to yourself and others. So there is a double uh, perspective and how you can obtain the benefit of providing that value. Here, basically, there is the identification of the needs and what you create as value uh, for yourself and for others, because of course, especially in uh, uh, contexts related to creativity, to CCI sectors in, in general, social entrepreneurial sectors as well, you need to be directly involved as the main actor to feel that that project is worth your time, your energies, and your financial and human resources. Belonging to networks help, this block help to reflect on the useful networks that you currently belong to, or you may belong to, so potential networks, uh, that can support in creating, developing, producing, and promoting your project. So any kind of network or stakeholders. Then there is the uh, block related to activities and work that helps to reflect on the main activities and workflow of the project. For example, the research preparation, the production, the marketing, the touring, the workshops, the reviewing, and so on. Again, we are talking about activities, okay? So nothing really specific, but it helps uh, the user um, break down, you know, all the big vision they have of their project into sub aspects, sub-activities. Equipment, materials, and time. Okay, that helps to identify the equipment needed and the materials that can be recycled as well from previous projects, for example, uh, and the time, because it is so important to consider how long it takes you to, I don't know, get that kind of material or to accomplish that activity and so on. Then this is a quite brand new block compared to the other canvases known, which is champions. Uh, it is related to uh, those people that can support you uh, if they believe your project is a very good idea, feasible idea, or they can be critic towards it. So they can help you with constructive critics. So basically, let's think about from friends to family, but also to mentors, teachers, whoever in your life can be a sort of um, a mirror for you to see, and, and they can be honest with you to help you and believe that what you're doing is right, or if there is something wrong that is not feasible, for example, they can help you to understand what it is. That's why mentors, teachers, uh, um, you know, anyone who, who was uh, who has a key role in the um, entrepreneur's life. Access for others uh, is referring to uh, that part where you analyze how others can access your work. So it makes you think about all the channels available for you to uh, as external, uh, let's say, promotion of your project. Getting feedback, this is another important uh, block as well. Because uh, it usually happens that when, especially, you know, all those creative entrepreneurs, they think my idea is great. I'm original, I'm innovative, I'll do it. Yes, but maybe if you prototype your project, your idea, and first you submit it to someone who can give you feedback about it, it can be useful for you to know if you're going down the right way. So getting feedback means you know, exploring current and potential tools and methods to get feedback about your work or your project from everyone who comes or might come into contact with it. It can be even, uh, you know, a survey or, you know, on your website, you may have just emoticons for people to say, I really like it, I don't like it. It's a good way as an approach, entrepreneurial approach towards uh, your business 
to see if you're doing the right thing, if you're going well, especially if it's a social entrepreneurial business. Short-term gains and losses, this theme is about the value of your project to you in short term. So what are you going to gain and eventually lose in short term? Um, so, um, I don't know, surely money. <laughs> this is the first thing that you lose in short term, usually. But you may gain, um, I don't know, approval from important stakeholders, for example, or you may start building up a network or knowing people that can support you and so on. Long-term rewards is, um, includes more frequent or greater opportunities, larger networks, and increased remuneration, of course, to invest in future creative or social entrepreneurial works. Uh, and of course, uh, we always invite the users when they use this creative project canvas to see uh, to include themselves as uh, beneficiaries uh, of uh, rewards or also as people who are going to lose something because sometimes we forget that one of the losses may be a little time for your family if you have one or for your personal life. Uh, so it's very important, as you can see, the approach uh, that this Creative Project Canvas uh, builds in the user's mind. So I prepared this uh, case study, which is a real case study. It's not an invented story. Uh, this is one kilo box, um, kilogram box. I don't know if you know this story. This is a true story uh, of this um, Andrew Yu. Here is the name. Uh, he, okay, I'm going to read it up to you. Uh, the place is remote villages in China. The problem, the, this is, this was a tourist, okay? Uh, he realized that students have little access to extracurricular book, books and such necessary items as school supplies, like erasers or pe pencil sharpeners. Um, inspiration for solution. Okay, in the past, some generous tourists occasionally have left stationery or money for these children. So Andrew thought of encouraging more tourists to help those needy children, especially those in more remote and impoverished areas. Uh, and so he had this idea to create a project called One Kilo on the Internet, One Kilo Block Box, to encourage tourists to bring children's novels or stationery in their travel luggage and then pass along these onto remote schools and impoverished children in need along that trip. To reach this goal, Andrew launched the One Kilo website with namely two services, to collect data on the beneficiaries of the program and to connect participants with beneficiaries. But then he realized there was an additional need because a school teacher involved in this project reported that although the excellent success of this initiative, <clears throat> solving the practical problem of lack of materials, the overall educational intellectual information needs were still unsolved. So he had an additional ideas, idea to involve the volunteers as well as the tourists to interact with these children and participate in passing on important ideas and knowledge. Now, this is the exercise. Imagine you are Andrew and you need to build your creative project canvas to visualize a clear planning of your project idea. In the next slide, I will show you Okay, here, this is our creative project canvas, the blank one. And here, I'm going to read them with you. There are the key questions guiding you to complete each block. So let's start from the value. In order to fill this block in, think, what are the main reasons why you engage with this project? What is the core value of this project to yourself and others? Does it satisfy a need or desire, or does it solve a problem? How? What are the benefits of delivering this value to yourself and to others? Then we go to belonging. Okay, they are mixed up here, but it's, it's the same. Belonging to networks. So how can current and potential networks support you with this project? How can they provide you with contacts and resources for your project to create and develop, to share and promote, to reflect and improve, to implement activities? So there are different perspectives on the kind of support you can get. It's not only to start 
up a project. It can be to promote it, it can be to develop it, or to create an idea, and so on. Activities and work. What are the most important activities needed to make this project happen? Who will carry them out? Will you need, for example, sometimes uh, one of the entrepreneurs forget that they need different uh, type of professionals. They don't, they don't have all the competencies needed. For example, in this case, you may be the one who doesn't have digital competencies. So think about the fact that you may need someone who is an expert with digital competencies, or you learn your digital competencies, but that needs time. So there are things to think about. Will you need other human resources? Which organizations, professionals might help you carry out some activities? What impact would the planned action have on you and others, family, friends, collaborators, etc.? Why? Because if we don't, if we don't consider this aspect, we may drop a project on the way because we didn't think about the fact that this project would have taken our time, our energies. So let's think about it. Is it a real commitment? Can I actually balance my private life with my entrepreneurial idea or me or my family or wherever? Equipment, materials and time. What kind of equipment and materials do you need? Who can provide what you need? How much time do you need to, to organize your equipment? Then we have the champions. Uh, who can guide you, help you reflect and improve aspects of your work by highlighting strengths and weaknesses through constructive criticism on your project? Who appreciates your talent, believes in your potentials and in your project and might advocate it to others? That is also important. Access for others, who can access and experience your project, services, products, contents? What are the different ways and places through which others can access your work? For example, web pages or social media or premises open to the public or offices or stores and so on. How can you reach your audience, clients, users? Here you have anyone basically. Through promotion and communication campaigns, crowdfunding campaigns, marketing campaigns, events, all of them in a sequential order maybe. You launch something and then you follow it up with other actions. Getting feedback. Who, who can give you feedback to improve your project work and activities? How can you collect feedback? Web tools, informal conversations, service, focus groups, and so on. How often can you collect feedback and how can you use it? Because that should be something constant, not to do it just once. Short-term gains and losses, what can you gain or lose in the next future by realizing your project? And long-term rewards, which rewards can you gain in the future by realizing, I cannot read anymore, <laughs> uh, this project?